Hi, I'm doing a little bit of a video on planking um, and we'll regard this as a beginner's planking video. Um, let me let me run through and you'll you'll quickly get an idea. So when I started thinking about doing a wooden ship, which was a, a bit of an overwhelming idea at the time, um, I went down to the shop, had a look through all of the offerings, and decided on the Constructo Victory, the HMS Victory, um, which was by no means a beginner's ship, but I liked it and I decided I'm getting it. And that's this one. Um, I took a while, looked over the thing, um, very much liked it, started reading up on the victory, and um, just realized that I needed to learn about model shipbuilding. So I went out and bought a number of books, um, probably about 10 books, on model shipbuilding, of which I started studying the planking sections. But it was still quite a... Um, Quite a daunting task so I took the um, a variety of the bulkheads from here and a, the deck and so on and I copied them and I made this a very rough whatever wood I could find in the garage at the time this was pretty long ago good 18 to 20 years ago but I slapped together something just to start getting an idea of the victory. Um, getting used to planking, I, I, I quite enjoyed doing the, the, um, the deck planking, various decks. There I just used some cork just because it was available and I wanted to get an idea of what it looked like. Of course you wouldn't use that on the real thing. Um, and on the inside I used balsa wood and... I think mainly balsa wood here yeah. to um, give me an inner surface to sand down before I got to the planking which I did that that was quite a nice idea and it's not a bad idea to even do on that one we'll see when I get to that um, but then then at least I was able to start getting to the this this second layer planking so you get single planked holes and double planked holes the first layer planking is this um well it can, it can vary in thickness but uh that gives you a little bit of an idea whereas the second layer planking is this thinner material this thinner wood pretty thin um i mean this one this one bends pretty well it's not it's not the worst you well I guess you get different grades some of it um, needs a bit more steaming than others to get it to bend but anyway um, I was at least able to start getting a little bit of an idea on getting planks down that that was a first stage in feeling a little bit of confidence um, you can sort of see I was just looking at it and you can sort of see that I was uh, reaching a point of that's that's sort of the limit of what I was able to do even though there's a balsa wood surface inside I getting around these complex well that's not even a complex curve that's just a curve a bit of a tight curve was a um, little bit of a challenge so anyway that 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 reached where it reached um, and then before I got further on to any development on the victory and it stayed like this I haven't I haven't even um, angled the bulkheads so that the so that they're in line with the, the planking flow um, I bought another kit which is the um, the Escampavia Pilar which I will do a video on I just I'll discuss that one and a friend of mine bought this marina He then did a an attempt at planking, which I, I didn't take photos of what that looked like, but it was a 
bit of a disaster and he just gave the ship to me to uh, try and try and do something with because at that point it was a write-off he he'd got some planks on but the framing wasn't done correctly and anyway I I made a good good bash at rebuilding that and I started with the planking and I eventually reached a point where I had my first planked hull complete and that's what I want to speak speak about here um, the beginners sort of thoughts on getting a completed hull unfortunately I have uh, stained this before the varnishing so you can't actually see the run of the planks which would have been handy for this demonstration video but nonetheless we'll we'll do the best that we can you can see a little bit on the inside but it's it's this um, the first stages of planking that I want to speak about. Now there's really a ton of videos online about planking of ships and the approach for a ship like this, a ship of the line, or I will at least say a ship where you can actually see the planking afterwards is a whole different ball game from a painted hull. This this will get painted. I did originally plan to leave it as a wood the wood look with the stain and varnish but I've, I've changed my mind and it wouldn't matter but anyway the, the point is you can get away with slightly ugly planking if you're going to be painting it and that's this beginner level planking that I'm talking about now um, I, I often wonder how many ship models get sold and then get abandoned or ruined because the builder didn't get through the uh, the initial stages of at least achieving planking it it isn't easy even single plank this is single plank so it doesn't have the it doesn't have these thinner ones it's it's only planked with that so you've you, you reach the point where you've done um, you've done your frames onto the keel. Uh, you've made sure that they're all 90 degrees to the best of your ability. Um, you've you you feel that you've got a, a you know rigid enough um, structure to start planking, and here's where we get to our our sort of guidelines, and this is discussed in other videos as well. I'm 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 just reiterating what is sort of known as the basics of planking um, so keep in mind you've now only got frames and nothing's here whatever you do on one side you do on the other side so step number one symmetry if you're going to be putting your first plank next to the keel over there then your second plank must be the other side you want to uh, to the best of your ability not have different stresses occurring on different sides of the hull. I mean even one plank alone can warp your your uh, keel in the early stages. So you could even think about putting in bracing pieces inside your inside your framing so that you keep a consistent width um, before you do your plank uh, your, your your beginning planking. <coughs> Or you need to do measuring to make sure that while you're gluing in a plank and especially clamping it and pinning it, you're not gradually, you know, a tenth of a millimeter each time uh, causing your, your structure to warp. So we've got, so let's, let's call that step one is symmetry. Step two is um, you need to get planks going from your keel you need to get planks going from the um, I don't even know what that's called the uppermost plank next uh, nope can't remember it's it's not it's not a deck line because your deck line's obviously a little bit lower um, is it the gunnel gunwale uh, so now if I put this one in position if I put that one in position you're gonna see what what it looked like there so you've got you've got a plank that either you've got to try and force it up, in which case you, you you're doing a double angle there, or you just run a straight plank and you've got to do that. We'll come back to that. But you need 
planking to start happening at that point as well. And then what you'll see a lot of modelers do is, apart from planking from there and planking from the keel, um, sort of a mid-level a mid planking. So let's say I got one plank there, one plank there, one plank there, one plank there, one in the middle, one in the middle. And what do I do next? Now, and I've been, I've been ensuring that I'm measuring. I've been checking that everything's straight. I haven't overly warped one side to the other side. What, how do I choose my planks? Now, this, this is a method for, this is the method that you won't use on the Victory. This is the method that you'll use when you don't really care about what the planks look like afterwards planking looks like afterwards because you're going to end up with so um, you're going to end up with odd shapes happening on your ship so let's say I chose my second plank to be next to one in the middle there because I felt that it ran pretty nicely and even if I hold this one right there you can see that that one is um, just about lying flat at a certain angle there and that uh, for, for a beginner ship builder that's an that's quite a nice um sort of feeling you've got a plank that you can lay down get it glued in position not all at once and you didn't have to do um, twisting and bending and forcing and steaming and all sorts of things you can get your plank down that's great that's okay uh, you can do that no problem so you might end up with one two three planks there only one over there one over there that's okay Obviously not three at the same time there and then move on to the other side. Whatever you ha do there, you did on the other side. The more planks that you get on, um, having ensured that you haven't warped anything at each plank's point, gives you better uh, structural rigidity so that hopefully less checking for each new plank that goes on. Because at a certain point, it's so rigid that one plank won't bend anything. Okay, so I've decided on my plank. That was point two, point three. I've decided on my plank to go down over there. How do I approach this? Do I do I glue from there? Well, what you do is you, if it's next to your other plank. So let's say that that was that was the plank there. I've now got the side area to glue onto, as well as a little bit of the frame. So you've you've. It's far more difficult when you don't have anything and you've only got your little dots of, of frame to glue onto. Now that you've got one plank down, you've got a little bit of extra. The method that I used, which I would recommend, apart from where, where do we start, we'll decide that now, is I only did about one or two frames worth at a time. So I, I, I put, put, a, put a bit of glue down there, but there, but there, do that section, get that braced into position, glue that down, and wait for that. Because that's at least now a... Um, you're not going to mess that up. So when I get to do a little bit more, that's held well in position. Let's call that point three. Point four is right. Well, where do I start? Do I do I start there because it because it looked like it was touching nicely there? Do I start there? Well, I'd say it would be it would be nice to probably start in the easiest place possible. Um, this bow has got a, a, a little bit of a turn out there so it sort of makes a sharper bow and that means that I would need to do um, possibly a little bit of extra bending so decide for yourself you know how much extra work was it that's not too bad so I'd probably want to start there not only that you've got this sharp bow which means that um, how how are your planks running into it? They're not just they're not just gluing onto there. You're actually ending up having to to angle off your your piece so that it touches against that bow section and can glue down. Um, so a little bit of extra work to get it down there. What about starting here? Well, there's quite a quite a quite a turn that you have to get around there probably some steaming and wetting of your planks so that's a bit difficult so what would I do well probably start right there I'd, I'd start with the easiest place possible next to the other plank that's already there 
having judged that it's going to make it all the way there, position it so that you've got enough to work with there, keeping in mind that you, you need to decide whether you're whether you're in a position to work this plank while it's already glued over here. If you feel that working this plank a little bit, shaping it and angling it, is too much hassle when your plank is already glued down, then do that first. And I guess start working from the bow. A couple of frames at a time, leave it for the required number of hours to get it down, carry on down, gluing it next to your other plank till you get to the end. Now you'll notice that that's an interesting thing that's happening right there. So let's say I did that. Uh, my plank isn't long enough. If you're working with planks that aren't going to make your ship's length, that's uh, sort of one of the things they do with these kits. They, especially the beginner ones, they try and ensure that that is in fact the size of your hole, that you can make it. I may have cut a piece off this one already. Yeah, that one's slightly longer. Hopefully on a beginner's model, you don't have to um, shorten your plank. But even if you had to, that's okay. Well, you end your plank on a frame and that's the best that you could do there. But doing this, this curved section is certainly going to be a challenge. Now, if you look, if you look on the inside there, you're going to notice little cross lines. And what you're going to see is it looked like this. And that is this tool here. I don't like it, but you might have to do it. Uh, it's up to you. Practice with it first. So what you do is you you sit and and put in little clamp lines, and it sort of it makes makes this plank far easier to bend in this direction. It's obviously you put your lines in so that it can bend that way. So even without this plank being wet, it can bend pr pretty well that way. Um, that's point one about that. You're going to have to wet your planks, possibly steam them. And m with my advice at this stage is I would have probably put some, some sort of small layer of block on the inside here. In other words, I would have made it into a double planking or if you're... I, I don't know if that's quite, it's not quite double planking, but something to allow these planks to glue onto on the inside there. Now that depends if there's anything on the inside that that would, you know, any functional parts. Now I've got the rudder going up over there, but that's not that's not blocking anything right over there. there Maybe the rudder linkage on the inside there. So you've got to think about now the. You, you're not going to see it there, but there's actually a piece of ply. So the kit, the kit has helped to a degree by having that piece there just be a single piece of ply, which you had to steam and get that into position. But below that, roughly over there, you had to do your planking. Um, that may have been the most difficult part of this whole kit, probably was. I can't remember now, that's quite a long time ago. Um, okay, right, so now you, um, <clears throat> you have done your planking, I, I, it's difficult to say how many planks you would have done from the keel, it, it's going to totally depend on which, uh, uh, on, on the modeler thinking, well, that's an easy plank to do or not, inevitably, I think you do whatever you felt was the easiest plank next. So you may have a couple of planks coming up from there. You may have a couple there. You may have a couple there. And then you might decide that from the middle going each way is the way to work it. But at some point you're going to end up with um, gaps gaps forming. Either, either this category of thing. You're going to have that sort of thing happening. Or you're going to have the reverse, where where you've got planking that starts coming into each other. That's that's pretty common. And when you look at 
when you look at a lot of model ships that have been built and you see that kind of thing, you've got this V which gradually uh, gradually makes its way across into the hull. And it was a ship where the uh, where it was not painted like a uh, um, a historic ship. That's that's sort of an indication that it was a beginner ship. They they did not follow proper planking procedures for for that type of ship. On this one, totally fine. You can get away with it. I can't I can't really see an example of that. On this one, um, I think another another little hint that I was doing at the time is for each plank that was completed, glued in, I would also put a little bit of glue on the inside again, a, a little bit of extra glue just to make sure that that held. Um, probably not necessary. Okay, so what did we have there? About four. Four tips, and there's one that I've avoided up to, up to now. I'll I'll get to that now. So symmetry, whatever you do on the one side, do on the other side with the required measurements and ensuring that you're not warping your hull at any point. Um, having a line that that you're starting to plank near the keel, you're starting to plank uh, near your gunwale, gunnel, and possibly planking in the middle. Um, there's no no right or wrong as far as that's concerned with a beginner level ship. Um, and the one that the one that I've avoided was this one. So when I have that plank there and I'm and I'm deciding what to do, um, I, I, I might test fit to see. Can I can I actually get it to follow that angle? Now, the the guide angle that you have at that point is the top of all your frames, so your frames are a little bit delicate at that point because absolutely nothing is holding them. It's somewhat easy for you to even move them with your hand. You could even break them off. They're, they're a little bit of a delicate structure at that point. Can you lay? Can you lay a plank? either across all of them or at least across some of them such that you start bracing the, against the tops of your your uh, frames your bulkheads now on this one you can see that I can do over there I can get it up to about that point can I do it around here yes I can might need a little bit of sideways force might need a, a, to have wetted my plank but it's not the worst so and I think a, uh, from what I can see here, looking through the um, the varnish a little bit, it looks like I did do that. Which means I would have been ending up in a situation where I'm I'm sort of forcing my planks to 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 bend around there, and then bend a little bit sideways up there. I can't remember now anymore um, how many planks I went up from the bottom. And um, going going up going up around this is not the worst around the propeller shaft area. Um, so you may have ended up yeah that that probably gives you a fair example. You may have ended up with quite a big V there. So the the next planks would be would be following that curve. And this plank is right near the top. And then you've got this extra V that you need to, to start filling in with shorter planks. Um, in the interest of keeping that somewhat short, I think I will end that at that point. Um, the deck is obviously a plywood piece with the thinner planking um, down over there and you can see that if you're not careful you do chip it you do you do chip little pieces off it can be a little bit brittle or if you're sanding it there and you catch an end um, I wasn't too worried about it this, uh, uh, on this model it, in a way it sort of semi adds to the uh, weather defect even wh whether or not the real ship would have had any damage sort of decking like that questionable but it, it looks okay on a 
on the model even up front there we can we can live with it and we can get away with it okay hope that gave you a bit of uh, an idea